I'm Andre Lazar, welcome to Dudes and Dominoes. Y'all know what it is. Let's go! So, 
So when I hear, yeah. so when yeah. I hear that, because I remember a train stop. Remember the trains used to just remember that trains used to stop there off yeah, there. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, trains used to stop and mud. And they know what we gonna do. They know them trains gonna get yes. infiltrated. Absolutely, we all kind of stuff in them trains, right? Yeah. So we see that that's a a systematic uh, way to get rid of or eliminate. People. That's what it looked like. Right. To harm us, to, it's to not by accident. accident. It's not by accident. No, so by accident. what is it that we can do? Like, what can we do? Because we, we, we see that. That's a big point. Like, I didn't know you was going to go there. Yeah. That's a great point. Yeah. So what can we do to even combat that? Or even Is that even in the car? Well, we got to address the obvious issues. Because, hold on, Sue. Because NRA, right? They talk about the NRA, right? Yeah. So does the NRA, do y'all think the NRA, I'm just thinking of this, do they, because that's government funded, that, well that's a government backed, I ain't going to say funded, that's a government backed entity that the right wingers, they like are NRA <coughs> aficionados, right? Right. So do you think the NRA has anything to do with that? Well the NRA is, they interact with the government. Mm -hmm. Right. And when you, when you talk about the NRA, they are in bed with the, with the government. Right. So they give... The, the supply to the government and the, and the government distributes them to the kids. And, and you know, the thing is, if you have, uh, if all business is based on supply and demand. Right. So they have the supply and in the, in the, in the city is a big demand for weapons and guns. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're going to they're gonna set them up, the NRA, the, the politicians, and, and you know, the systematic, you know, the system that, that's trying to Cripple the black neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. They get together and figure out this is the best way. Right. Let's get these guns. Find a way to get them to these kids, and they're gonna do the rest. Right. Yes. Yeah. But, but but go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um. All right. So I like what you said. So I'm, I'm more of a don't put the car before the horse. Right. And I believe honestly, the black market is the black market. The black market will be around. It has been around since time. No doubt. And so if we continue to focus on Who's running the black market? I think we're wasting our energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think what you said was really hitting on the head is let's go to the economics of this process. Mm -hmm. Supply and demand. Yeah. There's always going to be a supply. So the only way to make a real change is start affecting demand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. because the economics of the world is going to yeah. show, as long as there's demand, people will find a way to supply. Yeah. Even during the Holocaust, mm -hmm. there was still a black market amongst the Jewish people in the Holocaust. Yeah. No so way. it doesn't matter what kind of oppression you have, there's a black market in prison. Yeah. And we all know it. People have drug addictions, get addicted to drugs mm -hmm. in prison for the first time. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So again, supply and demand is the most prevalent rule that we have in our country, actually the world to a certain extent. Yeah, that's why I bought this scholar out here, man. You yeah, yeah. Yeah. some scholarly stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, some, that's some great, that's, yeah. I said that jokingly, but that is an awesome point when yeah. you start talking about supply and demand. But what, what you said was, what he said was, you have to start dealing with the demand. Okay? Well, and dealing with the demand is this. Let's stop. Let's get past this fluff. The recent fluff was FBI went in, as they've been doing for decades, and arrested these big-time drug dealers, these uh, black disciples, and they put it out there for the public. Oh, oh they arrested them. Mm -hmm. They've been doing that for years, and yeah. they've nothing changed. Mm -hmm. You got to go to the core. You got to start with the young men. Okay. And trying to put uh, things in place to go to your point to change their whole mentality. Yeah. Let me just put this out here. Asheville, North Carolina mm -hmm. agreed to give black folks reparations. Mm -hmm. Now, most people are ignorant to the fact that reparations ain't necessarily money in your hand. They donated funds to the cause of changing the community yeah. and improving the community. Improving education, mm -hmm. improving knowledge, making young, impoverished people better, giving them a better chance. Yes. But the United States government hasn't done that. So, no. with, with that, Donnell, yeah, I want to see what Donnell had to say. But my point on this is if you want to make change, you have to start with education. Mm. You have to start with the education mm -hmm. because it's got to change the mindset. In the education system that we got, I mean, change that. Give us what give us what you give to those up north. Give us the resources that you give them. And pay these teachers for spending that time with these kids. So when you say that, right, so when I hear that, I hear long-term solution. Mm. 
right? Because you got to go through legislation, you got to go through a process. I hear governmental red tape. That's what I hear. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So when I hear that, not saying that that's not a fact, that's not a true statement, that's not something that we have to do. That's why I'm going to put out here, I don't care what you, nobody think about it, if we don't vote in this election, if we don't get out here and get into this election and get to understanding how he can put all these judges in place, get understanding how this legislation is working, we, that's education. So that's long term. We got to do something now. Mama's baby got shot last night, nine years, nine, yeah. nine years old. He yeah. got shot last night. Ooh. He just playing, right, playing in, the, in the doggone uh, parking lot. Mm. Right. Get shot, killed. He got shot multiple times. Right. So yeah. it wasn't a straight bullet that got him. It was a multiple of bullets that yeah. got my man. It's crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So what can we do now? Because to your point, how do we affect this demand? Well, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, 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 this is the thing, man. We, we got to look at the breakdown of the black community. Okay. And we got to ask what's missing from the black community okay. that's got these kids going first. Mm -hmm. And what's missing from the black community is me, black me. Okay. There's been a, a systematic assault on the black man. You know, where whether it's police brutality, whether it's uh, incarceration, or whether it be uh, black on black crime. The, the, the black man is missing, and, and the thing about anything, and look, I'm, I'm not knocking women, I'm not bashing women. I know there's some strong women out here mm -hmm. that, that, that raise some awesome kids. Right. But for the most part, a kid needs a man in his life. Mm -hmm. Especially a young black man. Need a man in his life. You know, you need a father, man. There's not enough black fathers in the black neighborhoods, in the black communities that's taking these kids and, and it, it, even the guys like us, like I go to the hood from time to time, man, I go visit my mom. And it's, it's young guys, you know, most of the guys my age got this, this fear of these young black brothers, mm -hmm. you know. When in actuality, man, if you just walk up to one of these young brothers, man, and talk to them and give right. them a hug, mm -hmm. and, and that's all they miss. That's right, they that's want. all they miss. They want an a, a older black man that's doing something positive to reach out to them and talk to them. Not if they walking down the street. You know, you already got white people scared of young black men. Yes. As black men, we shouldn't be scared of our young brothers. Come on. You know, hey man, talk to these young cats, man. Give them a hug. Say, hey man, look man, you're gonna be all right, man. Here's here's some uh, what's going on in your life, man. What's happening with you? Why are you doing what you doing? Come on, man. Here's some other alternatives. Talk to them. So now that's it. That's it. Talk to them. Cause now he putting the onus. Back on up. It's on the yeah. right. No, it is. So it, it's the on us now turns where we have to look in the mirror and say something. Now, one thing I am going to say, because you said something about what one thing that they use. They use this term black on black crime. Mm -hmm. But you never hear white on white crime. Correct. No. You never hear Hispanic on Hispanic crime. Mm -hmm. And you never hear uh, Mexican on Mexican crime or none of that. It's black on black crime. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is, that's a deterrent. Because I, I did, it was a study that, uh, this uh, this I was reading, and they use that term to do what? Continue to uh, perpetualize where we are in the black community to keep the black man, because it's the black man killing the black men. They said 88 percent of the murders that happen in our community is by black men killing other black men. Well, right. well, gang members are seven percent of the population in the city of Chicago. And I think it said a 91% of the people that's involved in the violent crime and murder. Uh -huh. And that's that's a that's a big issue. But oh, to, so, okay, go so go. <clears throat> to go on that point and to add in, to bring off the end, it's, right. it's called guidance. Come on. So the thing is this, let's be real life. If you're not scary and you actually go talk to the world on the block, right. why are they there? You know why? Because they're seeking guidance, protection, and they're uh, seeking mentorship. Mm -hmm. let's, let's be real about well, that. Break that down again. Guidance? Guidance, protection, mentorship. Okay. Yeah. So guidance is like, it's giving me some idea of what I'm doing. Right. Protection is, I got to feel safe. Maslow's hierarchy needs. This is human nature. Absolutely. I care a little black, brown, purple. Your first need is the human beings the need to feel protected. Yeah. yeah. And so if I am not feeling protected, I'm going to go and do what I think I need to do in order to be protected. If that's carry a gun, let's carry a gun. If that's go beat you up, let's beat you up. If that's go ride with these dudes, let's ride with these dudes. So they are getting guidance and mentorship, excuse me, they're getting uh, guidance and mentorship, uh, protection through, these, uh, through this organization. Mm -hmm. Now, if to finish it off, 
They really need somebody to give them hands-on knowledge. Well, guess what? I know some very smart brothers. Guess what they got to talk about? Thieves. Guess what they're really good at? Stealing. Mm -hmm. I know some very smart brothers. Guess what they did? Schemes. So guess what they do? Rob through schemes. Mm -hmm. So these same brothers, if you give them another avenue to use these same talents with, they will be the scholars. They will be your lawyers. They will be your judges. They will be all the other things. So that as, you a, want as a counselor growing up and seeing that, yes, would you sit here, because I believe it is, I believe okay. that the this I believe that and you guys can help me out here. I believe that the uh the for the a black student mm -hmm. the criteria not just the criteria but the expectation is so low for a, a, a young black man student wise as far as the criteria. What they'll do in a in a black school is they'll say this is the criteria to pass. But if you take that same criteria to say the same public school, but you take it to Homewood Flossmoor, say for instance. You go to Thornwood and Homewood Flossmoor. They got two different standards, right? Mm -hmm. Two totally different standards right. for what it is to say that you pass the class or you, are, you, are, you become a, a C student. The standards for a C student at Homewood Flossmoor and a C student at uh, Thornwood are totally different. Why is that? Well, you know the number one indicator of uh, academic success? Social economics. It ain't got nothing to do with the educational system. Come on. Social economics. This is proven. It's all statistically proven. Mm -hmm. The number one indicator of academic success is social economics. Plain and simple, people in a certain area have a certain mentality. Okay. And because of that mentality, the community will continue to push that mentality because that's what they're taught to do. Mm -hmm. And so when you come from a certain social economic, social economic structure, I don't care if you're at the bottom of that structure or the top of that structure, your mentality is different. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to make demands. Because see, in a certain group, their parents will not cry about certain things. They will not complain about certain things. Right. In a certain group, they're not having certain things. They will not allow certain things. And that's where you get... So what's the different, different groups? Because you're in the school system, man. I ain't mm -hmm. got to call that. What's the different groups? Um, honestly, they don't care about what school you at and how much money you make. There's a has and a have nots. So I have students who their parents will push them in every AP class they have. And from the day they walk into my campus, you can tell that kid's going to be a successful kid. Not because of that kid, because of the structure around that kid. Okay. And just the same way, I can see kids fall through the cracks because of the same, the little opposite of that. Lack of structure, guidance, protection, and mentorship. But that's like, go to this, statistics. In 1990, the typical murder victim was a black man uh, 30 years old or younger mm -hmm. from an impoverished neighborhood that did not have a male present in his home in life. The, the, the detective said, if I went to a home where there was a black man involved and there was some kind of crime-related situation, they was always the victims. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was never, we were never yeah. seeking to arrest them. If it was a father at home, every time he went to a home in 1990, that was a family making a complaint. Mm -hmm. It wasn't never the other way. That is crazy. No. It, it, we, we, we really undervalue, man, the importance of a, a man in the kid's life, man. And uh, like I said, my hat goes off to all these strong, powerful sisters, man, just doing it on their own, man. But, man, I'm telling you, I, 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 my, I'm going to give you an example, man. My daughter, she was very popular in high school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, a lot of her, her boyfriend, he played football, and so a lot of the young guys used to come over to the house. And so they would be in my backyard playing ball, and, you know, the first day they came over, it was like a whole bunch of guys, my daughter boy, my daughter boyfriend, a bunch of guys. So I was I was sitting there, I said, well, you know, let me throw a few burgers on the grill for the kids, man. I sat out there, chopped it up with them, shot a few shots with them. They kept coming to me, had a lot of questions, a lot of curiosity. Right. And so... You know, my daughter, she comes back about about a week later. She say, hey, Dad, the guys want to come over, you know, hang out in the backyard. I say, baby, your dad worked a lot of hours. I'm tired. I don't really feel like dealing with a bunch of kids. You know, there's plenty of places to go basketball, play basketball that out here. So she said, uh, you think they're coming over here to play basketball? Right. Wow. He said, they all, right. on, they, they all on the basketball team. They can play at the gym at the school. I said, well, why are they coming over here? You know, I was asleep to the whole thing. Right. She said, they coming over here to talk to you. Because yes. most of them boys don't have fathers. Mm -hmm. and, and even if they said, hey, I said, baby, 
Tell them guys they can come over anytime they want. That's a big and and, and a couple of them, they wouldn't play ball with me. They come over to that. I see them. I go to Calumet City right now. Mm -hmm. I'll, everybody call me Pops. They be like, hey, what up, Pops? You know, they, I see them. They work at the store down in Kansas City. They're walking down the street. And they never forgot that. You know? So that's the importance of it. And we on the value. I didn't even know. It. So right. that's why I'm like, 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 I tell them, I see your friends, and I see your future. Because if your friends, if none of them is a, on something as far as getting an education or better their life, then that's what you want. Mm -hmm. If they ain't doing that, if they on negativity, that means you on negativity. Don't be around that. Yeah. You can choose who you're going to be around that's going to bring positive out of you. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, I, think I, 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 on something big, I think Rick hit on something big, though. Because I think that, because we're saying, what is the missing element mm -hmm. that, that affect change today? Mm -hmm. One of the missing elements is, to, to Rick's point, and to everybody's in consensus, is men. Mm -hmm. Right? Having mm -hmm. the, the wherewithal to go into the community uh, and, and, and really don't have any fear of how someone looks mm -hmm. yeah. and being able to embrace that kid or just even holler at them. Or even adults, when you operate the train. I treat everybody the same. I don't care if you're homeless. I don't care how you look. I don't care if I see what your addiction is. I'm still going to treat you with respect. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to honor your existence. I'm not just going to walk past you. You know, hey, what's going on, brother? Everything. All right, I ain't judging you. I'm just checking on you. Hey, so, what's up? So what's the provoking to action? Because I, we have to maintain what we said we want to do. We want to provoke thought. So we, we've created a thought process. Because I'm going to tell you, what. here's the opposition that we're up against, right? We understand the absence of father. Mm -hmm. But we're up against the propaganda of media that wants to display something to these, to these individuals, to us as men, not necessarily us individually, but to the men that have made it, the middle class worker that has made it, they don't go back to the hood, mm -hmm. right? Why don't he go back to the hood? Because there's a propaganda that these kids are so wild, they'll kill you if you try to step to them. Because that's what's being spoken. Yeah. Uh, is that something agreed or no? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Gary. <clears throat> I've been waiting on mama. <laughs> well, <clears throat> on, on levels, black people, Black men especially mm -hmm. have been consistently considered a menace or a threat. And what that did was it trickled into our community uh, via the civil rights movement. Come on. Because prior to the civil rights movement, we were forced to rely on each other. We had everything that was our own, our own stores, our own funeral homes, our own car dealers. Yeah. Who remember Harvard Christ the Prince? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So the civil so the civil rights movement. Basically, in a nutshell, is this. The same people that were violating your rights December mm -hmm. of 1960-whatever right. are the same people that's in office January of 1960, the new year. They didn't bring about, you changed the policy, right. but you didn't change the practice. Right. So what we have to do is we have to change our practices towards one another. Right. And we have to you know, recognize and realize the system isn't for us. The and system have, isn't for us. Right, we have to make our own. So and we have to figure out how to rely on one another, not be abused. You know, right. we're relying on one another. That's a deep thought. That's what we used to do. That's a deep thought. When you say we have to rely, we have to change <laughs> the system because it's not for us. Is that, I have to recognize that. Is that realistic, though? Oh, it's going to have to be realistic. Go ahead. Um, yeah. Not only is it realistic, it's historic. And so it's the same thing. It's not only is it really realistic, uh -huh. and I say realistic is the thought process. Okay. We are making that that thought sound like a new thought. That, that's not a new thought. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And the education that is part of the mentor guidance process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to instill into these young brothers, sisters, everybody that this is not new. We've done this before. Yes, right. You're not a trailblazer. You need to just get back on the right track. <laughs> and so yes, once we get that mentality yes, back, and see that's the guidance and the mentorship I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. See, if you don't understand that the black dollar stays in our community less Come than on. six hours, Come on. and that you give it away to somebody else who could care less about you or your people or your progress, then you look at it differently. Okay. Then you look at the store like it's just a store. Right. You look at a meal like it's just a meal. Right. You don't realize that this meal is not only nourishing my family, but it's nourishing my neighborhood. Yes. It's nourishing my, mm -hmm. my neighbors. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. See, so when you have this type of mentality, but you have to educate kids on mentalities. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, all we educate kids on is what not to do. Mm -hmm. So we take something out of your life and do not fill a void. Mm -hmm. And so like you said, media will fill that void. Absolutely. The streets yeah. will fill that void. Yeah. It's plenty of stuff that's going to fill that void. So until we step up right. and stay consistent, not when you feel good, not when you feel bad, not when your emotions get got into it. Right. This is a daily grind. Like right. these are your kids. Well, they said that the, the, the black movement that's in place now, if the ball is not going to ro uh, stop rolling. And right. nobody, they said it, no, they, they, sure. nobody's letting off the gas pedal on this. No, no. That's what I, I mean, that's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm trying to feel. Well, you and the young the folks and that black folks and that people that have our struggle in mind, they said it's not letting up all. Yeah. Ain't gonna be no going back to song where it was good, but we, well, well, they said it's no letting up now. Well, that was a nerve that was hit, man. Mm -hmm. and, and it, everybody knew about what was going on in the black community. Yeah. Everybody knew about the police brutality yeah, issue. Yeah. This has been an ongoing issue for as long as we back as in the eighties, high school, long as that, from yeah. slavery, yeah, all, all the way to now. now. Right. It's always been white people in authoritative positions that took advantage, abused and abused power. their power and and brutalized black men. Right. Now, at this point in life, man, at this stage, for you to just visually see it, man. You know, with this social media age, and you mm -hmm. visually look on TV and watch a black man being murdered by a white cop with a smile on his face and his hands in his pocket, mm -hmm. it hit a it hit a nerve yes, it did. in America. Yeah. Now, if you have, I mean, you could be the most hardcore racist person in the world, man. And that that right there, that particular incident right there, would change the way you thought about black people and thought about the actions that you did and what you believed in. It changed a lot of people from being racist to saying, you know what, I'm going to put this Black Lives Matter t-shirt on because that wasn't right. right. If you have anything in your core, your heart exists, if you have any empathy, empathy, yes. and, and you can just, man, if you got any type of compassion, or yeah, empathy, yeah. that hits you and had to hit a nerve. I me, mean, I haven't even watched it yet. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. watch that for no 8 minutes and 46 seconds with no black man being killed. I knew what it, what it was, I knew what happened, I seen pictures on Facebook, but I've never watched it because I couldn't watch nothing like that. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people did. Yeah, I did. And as, soon as, and as soon as people watched it, man, they got up and they changed and they tuned about things. Well, in a lot of different directions. It changed people that's with the program's thought process yeah. and made us more active. Yeah. But, I mean, it's like you said, it's nothing new. How many... Young brothers back in the 80s, that's why I brought up the 80s. Mm -hmm. We knew guys that was involved in gang activity or whatever, but wasn't really hardcore. Next thing you know, we hear about them being shot in the alley by the police and they had a gun. We was like, I don't know, not him. Yeah. I, it wasn't, I, am I the only one that knows somebody? It wasn't right. social media age. Right. Yeah. Everything but, now is on video. But y'all experienced that. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, okay. so, 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 what did even know gun carry? So the right. police said they shot him in the alley, had a gun, and shot at them. I don't know. It's been happening for years. Right. We know it's been happening for years. Yes. Hey, Mom, go ahead. Well, if I was uh, wanting to comment on uh, what Mr. Rick was saying. Go ahead. About um, just this point. It's if we can stop and pump our brakes and figure out different ways to reach out. Mm -hmm. I used to call each one teach one back in the cross covers yeah, movement yeah, back in the 90s. Right, right, right. right. Um, we have to be able to meet that person on that level. Yeah. And we, by us being all separate in our assimilation, mm -hmm. then you might say, hmm, ratchet, not going to mess with them. I'll go over and teach the pottery class. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, how the pottery class going to benefit is what I'm saying. What benefits the cause? What benefits the cause? I know, young man, that that policeman. It's going to come back around here and harass you if you don't get off this corner. I'm just saying, I'm going to keep walking. Yeah. Right? That's good. Come on. <laughs> yeah. now, now, go ahead. To go along with that, uh -huh. there's two trains of thoughts. So I'm going to bring some. Can I mess it up for a second? Mess it up. All right, so then we got two trains of thoughts. Me and my bros always argue about this, right? For a second. Okay. You got each one teach one, and then you got the talent of the tent. Okay. You got Frederick Douglass. Right. Which says that. We realistically cannot reach all these people. We know that all these people are not going to ride with us. Mm -hmm. They're not going to ride with the righteousness. Mm -hmm. So the top 10% who do, we need to focus all our time and attention, at least the majority of our time and attention, to the top 10%. Mm -hmm. 
Because if we do that, we'll get higher results. But this is the stuff they didn't tell you in the movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, everybody that know that white people, we can never want to go back to our masters and go back to the house. Step four, and you know this, and you still want to be a part of step four. So everybody knew step four. It was like some guys are stood back there saying, man, I like my life as a slave. I ain't going back, you know, I'm not going with y'all. Mm -hmm. And he said, now everybody that stepped forward, turn around and kill these people. Yes, absolutely. So, so we can <laughs> get them out of the way and we can move forward. Absolutely. Every absolutely. movement that ever happened, man, in the history of any movement, everybody wasn't on board. They had to get left behind because you can't, you can't have a positive movement with certain people. Absolutely. So I want to just bring some clarity there. Right? And this is something that I think is key too. So, one of the behavior issues that we as a, as a black community have, sure. we have to realize where did this behavior come from. So, I believe that as slaves, enslaved people, when we were enslaved, what, was, what were we taught? We was taught, you say something out of pocket, you about to get jacked up. Mm -hmm. Right? You say something, so guess what? If you say so now, I'm with you all day. Now, Massa already, I already know if I say something out of pocket to Massa, I'm going to get messed up. So you better not say nothing out of pocket to me. Right. Because I'm going to mess you up. What and what happens what? is, hear, hear me now, because if you look at it from a progress, from, from all the way from slavery, we're talking 1600s, mm -hmm. all the way to now, that's been our behavior in the African American community. And it's always about, you step on my foot, right. bro, hey, but, don't you step on my shoes, don't you touch me, but don't they, invade, hold on, shit, yeah, I yeah. got you, don't invade my space, right. because once you do, then I'm going to pop off. That is the, that's nothing but the mirror image of what we saw the massa do to us right. as slaves. And so when you start talking about breaking images mm -hmm. yeah. and breaking behaviors yeah. and breaking patterns, we have to break the notion yeah. of respect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Think about this. disrespect. Mm -hmm. Because if you feel it's disrespected, it. then all of a sudden, our, now the go-to is this. The go-to is I'm going to my trunk. Yeah. Right. The go-to is now, hey, I'll be back. What you, you get and, what I'm saying? And, and now, go ahead. Then it's spread through time. This is my understanding. Like with my father and his grandmother, or some of our elders in our family. What rule was in the household mm -hmm. after slavery, and maybe a generation or so, was who had the iron fist in the household? My father's grandmother, he told me, boy. You better not blink the wrong way. I don't care. She would, it don't matter how big you was, if he was his, her son, yeah. 300. She was a little woman, probably about five, five, 150 pounds. Everybody walked on eggshells. But think about what And that's all, oh, think about that's, what like, that's, that's fallout out from slavery. It's the way that the master treated us. But listen, yeah. hold on. Let, let mama say something, then I want to piggyback on that. Well, <clears throat> It seems like what you're asking is, what are you willing to do? Come on, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. How far are you willing to go? Come on, for the cause. Because I, I, I look, I don't know if it's that way for anybody else. When I look at that footage of marches and the march on Washington, and these white people sipping dogs on you, so you can just try to live, mm -hmm. and all the contributions. I mean, hoses. So are you going to get up for that type? Are you ready for that? Did you see the Portland? They pulled out the, the fire trucks mm -hmm. in Portland. It looked like the 60s, bro. They hit the right. water hose. So that was and, the other day. That was last week. They're ready shooting protesters with rubber bullets in the face, but they keep coming back. So that's what I'm saying. What are you willing to do? Absolutely. But are you willing to die? That's the question. Just what so you're going to have to be. You're going to have to be. Gotta be. And, and, what, and what question did X ask, Brother Ramper? You have to sacrifice a few to save a multitude. That's yeah. it. And that's but it might mean sacrificing a multitude to save a few. And it may be us. We may be one of the sacrifices. True. In the sense of, what are you willing to risk? Because what happens, Rick, when you said us men? Yeah. The us. 
us, the ones that we we ain't rich, but we we live some okay lives, yeah. right? Yeah. We live good lives. Yeah. We I, I know I've said it. I won't speak for nobody else, mm -hmm. but I know I said it. Like man, I got too much to lose to go to jail. Yeah, right. Yeah, absolutely. And all on some foolishness, right? Mm -hmm. But you touch one of mine, then it's just gonna have to be what it's gonna have to be, right? Yeah. But then now we in an era. Well, we have to ask ourselves, what are we willing to do for our children not to experience what we experience? Talk to me. Honestly, we saw it. <laughs> we saw it. Punk ass parents. Ain't nobody doing that stuff to us. People already suffered that life. Come on. But mm -hmm. people sitting here talking in 2020, like you getting hosed down for real, for real, mm -hmm. on, on, on every given day. Right. Like, Matt's are slapping you every given day. Mm -hmm. No, we so don't you. are not slapping you, beating But like, you're not suffering like them. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, the reality is we can get soft. I teach my son stuff, and people's like, oh, is it too early? I said, ask the dude who got killed in the line to go vote if it's too mm -hmm. early for me to teach my eight-year-old about his death. <laughs> Come on, boy. Yeah. I'm just being right to right. Yes, so Look what you are, though. Look, you got to hear what you are, though. You're a father that's in a home that is active with his son. Yeah. Now, I'll be honest with you. I got a son, and we're going to have this conversation later, but I got a son that was not raised with me. Mm -hmm. And his behavior and my son that works, that lives with me, behavior. I got two sons. One I raised. One I took care of. I, 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 I spent one. Right? I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can give him guidance over the phone. I'm, now he, he called me more now than he ever called me. Right? Because he need me now. Just yeah. to, mentally. Right? Yeah, sir. Yes, sir. But his life was totally different because I, me being, me individually being absent out of his life. Yeah. And he's suffering for it firsthand. I'm looking at this firsthand. So if, if that can happen to me, and I'm a good dad. Right? I'm one, if my, if, if, you, if, if, if you look at the stereotype of a dad, they will say I was an okay dad. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. my kids may differ, but they didn't. <laughs> my point is, they will say I'm an okay dad, right? right so because of that, then I think we have to still go back to putting the onus back on yes. us to get past ours. Because if we just take care of ours, then it's too many that don't get dads then they gonna get taken care yeah, of. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? Gotta reach. So now, gotta reach out. now we finna get to the point we we cause we got like we got like 10 minutes, right? right. We got like 10 minutes. Okay. So what I wanna do is we gotta be about action. Yes. Right? I got something that I'm gonna put out here and we're gonna put in action for sure. But we gotta be about action. Mm -hmm. And I want us to talk about action right now. What we gonna do going forward out of here. But we can just say, okay, if we put we put money out here to have this podcast. It has to be on purpose. It has to be on power. So what we do? Go ahead. Do what you're familiar with. Come on. And so if you from to Inglewood, right? Yeah. Then go back to Inglewood. Because guess who will respect you the most? People from Inglewood. You said you worked on a train, correct? Mm -hmm. Then if you see a young black conductor coming up, mentor that brother. Stay yeah. in that lane. I'm not telling anybody to go outside of their lane. That's why I said we soft. Right. Yeah. We have so many avenues that we can do that. Honestly, you don't really have to extend yourself. It no. doesn't have to be financial. And honestly, the way if you do it right, it doesn't really have to be a big time to train. Mm -hmm. So all, my only challenge for black people, definitely black men, is be consistent. The same mm -hmm. way you want your child to be consistent, Ooh. the same way you pressure and you parent good. your children, mm -hmm. you, you do that to the same young brothers and sisters. The, my kids, my students, I call them my kids. Mm -hmm. Because they're my community. Come on. Once they with me, they mine. I just let them sleep at your crib. Yeah. And so my kids, I treat every single one of them the same way. They know me the same on Monday that I am on Sunday. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if right or wrong, I'm going to be right sometimes. I'm going to be wrong some other times. But they know that consistency and that leadership, that guidance, that protection, that consistency of that. We get through all the wrinkles. Yeah. Down there. I still go back to education, and what I'm going to do is. Everybody that I touch, and it don't even have to be, it could be someone I age mm -hmm. that just fell out yes, and need some guidance. Need help. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Just like you said, mental illness is real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you, uh, like we was talking one day, you had a guy, I don't want to bring no name up, but he was going through something. Mm -hmm. and, and you said, you know what, I got to be there for him. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's my part, I'm going to play. 
I'm, I'm, I'm going to be that. I have nothing to do with your kids, so it'll be, I'm going to be a friend. Now, look, for those that watch Dudes and Dominoes, the other podcast, this man is Mr. Passion, right? And he usually is out of the box going crazy about his boy. Yes, he is. But it must be his birthday or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. <laughs> hey, y'all give it up for this boy's birthday. It's his birthday. Hey. And he's been celebrating. That's what's going on. That's what's going on. The birthday is real. Yeah, yeah. 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 he ain't recovered. Yeah. 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 to the younger people that you work with mm -hmm. and what's going on with them. Yes. Don't be the guy at work always trying to hustle up on uh, a female. Uh, just be a stand-up guy. Mm -hmm. People pay attention to that. Yeah. I mean, it's enough of those. Yep. The simplest positive example. When you see a, a young couple, you might tell young people that uh, this marriage that I work with, when I say young, I'm 53, I mean, uh, 45. Uh, <laughs> but no, I'm talking to people in their 30s. I'm like, man, you know, y'all make us feel good, y'all young couple. It's that's good. important. Mm -hmm. so the ladies be like, man, that's, that's yeah. you know, it's it's good. Good. you don't hear that. Yeah. So just be the simplest positive right. example. Hey, I'm a truck driver. Right. <laughs> right. I'm an owner operator. I started my own thing. Mm -hmm. And it's all about empowerment. Come on. You know, like I talk to a lot of cats, man, young cats, they want to try to get into the game. Because a lot of times, if you have a record or anything, got a felony in your background, mm -hmm. truck driving is one of the few fields that you can get yes. into a still, mm -hmm. earn a decent living. Good living, yeah, yeah. Right. You know, better than decent in some cases. Right. Mm -hmm. So, what I try to do, man, I mentor a lot of cats. And I got, man, I probably got about 15 to 20 people into the trucking game. And now, all of them was telling me, like, hey, Rick, when, you, uh, when I get on my feet, man, I'm going to make sure I take care of it. I said, Taking care of me is not important. I'm straight. I got everything I want. Right. Mm -hmm. I said, you go help the next young man. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. You can't yeah. go. Yeah. You know, you, you, know go. you can't reach back, man. You got to go forward. Oh, right. You know, I'm good. Right. You know, don't feel like you can give me a couple of dollars and you don't help that brother that's trying to come up to right. you. The fees are perfect. This is how you affect a change and then you affect a lot of people, man. You yeah. got to try to affect multiple people. Now, I, I, um, uh, I talk to young cats, man, and then I tell them, you know, like a lot of people, like, they, they kind of see me and look at my life. You know, a young cat came up to me one time. He was like, man, man, Big Rod, you got it going on, man. You know, when I get my stuff together, I want to be like you. I said, be better. Yes. Why stop here? Right. You know, why would you let limit yourself to what I'm doing? Right. right. My life, is to me, is basic. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do so much better, man. You can push yourself so much further, man. Why stop here? You know, that's what it's about, man. I want to see, like, I don't want to see my son, my no. daughter. I don't want to see none of my kids, man, on the same level as me. I, I, like, to, I like to take my friends over my kids' out, Big swimming pool, nice big mansion, ch chilling. Mm -hmm. and, I be, and I I got nothing but my chest sticking out. My son, man, my, this, my son, Chris. Yeah. You know, that's how I feel about these guys that's trying to get into the game. Mm -hmm. And I said, don't just stop, you know, just... Work for people and you know like that. You you young. You got a lot of energy, man. Stack your money. Start your own thing. Take it to a twenty twenty a twenty twenty level. Man. A twenty twenty status. That's yeah. what I tell my kids. Yeah. Okay, you could be you, intelligent. Man. You could be uh, a number one academic. You could be like my daughter, summa cum laude. Right. Uh, four point oh for four years. But what are you going to use it to do on a 2020 level? There's been plenty of summa cum laude that have came along over the years. Who you Where are you going to take it Absolutely. in 20 to 2020? I say, who you yeah. help you? Go ahead, bro. I'm going to ask you a quick question. Sure. When you have those conversations with those people, is it motivating to you as well? Feels worse. Because when I have it, honestly, you got to live what you preach. Yeah. And so if I'm a model to you, and I constantly tell you about progress, yeah. if I constantly tell you about all this positive stuff, mm -hmm. then when I look at the mirror at night, I gotta say, why am I still here? Yeah. Because I've even got it complacent. And so that's yes. why I believe it's a beautiful cycle. It's because, yeah. yes, I'm paying it back, but honestly, I'm still kind of investing in myself because yeah. you give me that young energy. Oh, yeah. 
that infusion oh, yeah. that makes me want to continue to progress. But I'm not finished, you know what I'm saying? I mean, Absolutely. I'm not finished. I'm not a finished product yet. Mm -hmm. it's, it's things that I'm still working on that I need Absolutely. to get, take my, my game to the next level. Right. But yeah. one thing about it, man, as black men, you know, our biggest problem is we don't share information with each other. Yes. Yeah. We want to make money and, 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 and take care of our little world mm -hmm. and make sure that everybody <laughs> in our world is straight mm -hmm. and we don't want to help nobody. If you got some information, like, like, like man, me blowing out your candles don't make my candles shine no bright. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It ain't going to help me at all. I'm not going to benefit at all from not seeing somebody properly. It's just a selfish act, man. Yes, because we don't like to pull each other up. Well, that's the slave mentality. Yeah. Crap to the barrel. Yeah. Right. So, right. so, so, right. so what, so what we're going to do is bring it into this. We're going to bring it in. I got mm -hmm. like, we got like two minutes, right, to bring mm -hmm. it in. So one thing that we're going to do, so everything that everybody said was beautiful as far as action is concerned. Mm -hmm. One thing that we committed to, Andre Turner, Dudes and Dominoes. We have a group. It's called Iron Man. It's called Iron Shop with Iron. All right, man, we've been working with the Dalton Park District already. We've been working with the Dalton City already, and we're about to launch something, and I want you guys to be looking out for it. Okay. What it is, it's a program where we're going to provide tra a trades program for the uh, Dalton Park District. And what we're doing is we're going to we're gonna bring in truck drivers. We're going to bring in um, contractors. We're going to bring in general contractors. We're going to bring in HVAC people just to create trades and just to put jobs in the community and have a place where they can have a, a resource to create uh, a career That's for great. young people that are coming up. That's, That's an great. action that we're doing from Dudes and Dominoes, That's our great. media group. It's called Iron Shop and Iron, and we're, we're, we're in, pro in process right now. Okay. You don't have to do something that big, is what I want to say. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do something that's going to change the world. All you got to do is change your world. Mm -hmm. and be a, a, a source and a resource in your community, a source and a resource around you. Everybody that knows me, my sons, all his friends, they everybody know. They they call all of them call me pops, dad, yeah. whatever. They love it because I've been doing it with them since they was little knee high to a grasshopper. And we're gonna keep doing what we're doing because I'm telling y'all, it's gonna take as Rick said, as the Bell said, as Shoe said, as Donnell said, as Gail said. It's going to take us as men, it's going to take us as a community to have the courage to go do what God has given us to do, and that's make change and take action. In Jesus' name, we love you. Peace out, dudes and dominoes. Give it up, y'all. Yeah.